Hey, hey, welcome back. Today's video is about uploading files, more specifically about uploading images. I'll start with the demo. Um, this is just a file picker, the standard HTML file picker. Of course, the, the Blazor standard component for that. Uh, it's in my native language, but it just says choose file. Wait, let's first inspect this so you can see it's an input uh, HTML tag accepting multiple files and specific with specific extensions like image extensions. All right, let's pick a few files. Let's first, let's uh, try to cause an error. I'm selecting four files. And it tells me the maximum number of files accepted is three, but you supplied four. So that's a custom error. I'll show more about that later. So let's try an acceptable amount. And it should preview these using a base64 data string. Cool. Let's now check out the code. For those of you who haven't seen previous videos, uh, my setup is as follows. I have multiple Blazor, Blazor WebAssembly projects, so client, yeah, single page applications. And I want those Blazor WebAssembly projects to share the same CSS and some of the same components. So the ones with SPA are the single page applications, Blazor WebAssembly applications. I have one here, Pet Social SPA, and I also have one here, Belgian Dogos SPA, um, but we'll mainly focus on this one. And in here, on the index, page, we added the image upload component, which you just saw in the demo. It has a few parameters, accepted file format, so you can specify whether to accept images or other types of files. Max file size is, uh, yeah, to limit the to limit the ability of uploading too large um, files that are too large. Maximum files, of course, is to limit the amount of files you can upload. I also use this one to, let's say I only want to have one, then it's not going to allow multiple it's not going to allow to select multiple images or files. Let's take a look at the component. So it's a Blazor input file component that's out of the box, coming from yeah, the Blazor components. It has a unchange event callback, which will trigger my own methods when uh, files are selected. This multiple decides whether you can choose one or more files. Um, and I said, if max amount of files is more than one, then I'll allow to select more files. Else this is going to be false and you can only select one file. Then I specify to only accept, uh, yeah, it's also a parameter, so you can pass what you want to allow, which type of files you want to allow, but I defaulted it to images. And here, the max amount is defaulted to three and the max file size is limited to 20 megabytes. 
so like this is one megabyte as a long specified as a long type and then 20 times one megabyte so that's that Underneath this component, I wanted to preview the files that were selected. So I'm doing that here using this base64 image string and the file name is alt. Let's take a look if this alt. Yep, it's filled in YouTube thumbnail too. Yep, indeed. Okay. <coughs> Let's then dive into the code. I made a list of upload file. That's a custom class I made, um, which accepts, yeah, which has a few properties, name, content, content type, is image, image string. Content is a byte array. I will see that later. The name is just a file name. And the content type is the type of the file, the mime type of the file. This is our custom method that uh, oops, gets the event args arguments from this callback. And we put all of this code in the try catch because there is a multiple possibilities of throwing an invalid operation exception. So we can get the selected files by using event args that get multiple files and this max amount of files. Uh, let me see. If we dive into the code, uh, it will throw an invalid operation exception if you select more files. So, so that's the error we saw the, in the demo, the first error, error that told us we try to supply more files than is allowed. Okay, if you just have one file, you could say, but I'm just going to call it F for now, and args.file directly. Let's say if you don't use this multiple thingy. In our scenario, in our case, if it's just one file, yeah, it's just going to be a, a read only list of one file. So no problem there. Then we loop over the files. Here we are checking whether the content type of the MIME type of the file is in the accepted uh, types. If so, we'll just return it as the file format and else we will take the first of these accepted ones. Actually, with we might want to throw an error or something. The thing here is, this is a method that attempts to convert the incoming file into an image, convert it to an image if possible. Uh, when it's larger, it's probably going to try and convert it to these dimensions. But the method says it's going to respect the aspect ratio so you don't get a distorted image. Let's hope that's true. First, of course, we're going to open the read stream, and this method is going to enforce the max allowed size. You see here the default is 512, so it's 500 kilobytes. Uh, I based my calculations of 20 megabytes on this. So I did uh, 512,000 times two and then times 20. Okay. Uh, if, of course, the 
the input file is larger, it's going to throw another invalid operation exception. That should. Uh, okay, and if uh, all goes well, it's going to copy that to the memory stream created. This memory stream is used to get a byte array, the buffer. <laughs> Uh, and this buffer is used to create these image strings, these base64 image strings, but also um, to create multipart form, da form data, to create form data. Uh, so we fill up our list of file uploads with a new object containing the file name, the content type, the buffer is, so is this, uh, the actual contents of the file, the file itself, as a uh, byte array. I said this image is true because in this case we want an image, and then this image string is uh, nullable. So, well, if this would be, if it wouldn't be an image, uh, it's no point of trying to uh, preview it. I would say. Uh, and then this image string is solely used to preview the images. And that is just going to construct a base64 data string. So data, double point, content type, um, data, content type, then specify base64 and convert the byte array to a base64 string. Okay, so then we have a nice object we can loop over and display the images. Upload files is still a work in progress. Um, first, we construct the form data. Um, it's recommended to send form data to the API uh, rather than just a base64 string. So that's all we do here is construct some form data uh, using the transformed this byte array into byte array content, which is, um, yeah, uh, inheriting from HTTP content. And HTTP content is actually what this form data dot add expect. So that's great. Um, took me a while to figure this out um, because most examples will show like stream content or um, yeah, I don't know, other things. And then I was messing around with multiple memory streams and or trying to reuse the same memory stream and getting some weird errors about the stream being already consumed and all that stuff. Uh, so it's actually a pretty nice thing that we can just use the byte array to add to the form data, which would be yeah, a solution I expected to work. Like I actually expected to just add the byte array in here to the add. But anyway, uh, one thing I forgot to mention maybe is this copy async is necessary to actually get this buffer, uh, to get a valid uh, buffer, a valid byte array from memory. Uh, without this, you're just going to get some default or empty base64 strings. So uh, the Microsoft Docs are also recommend to either upload the file to a temporary uh, to a directory in the backend or to 
directly to the Azure Blob storage from the client. But there's a few problems with those. Um, the first one, to upload it to a directory in your backend, that might not work if you're deploying on Azure, your app, if you're deploying your app on Azure, since it's not going to persist these uh, newly created files uh, when the bots recycle or when the app restarts in Azure. Uh, so that's not great. There's also, of course, the solution to store this base64 string or this buffer directly inside your database, but that is going to be that's going to impact your performance a lot, and you might have to scale up your database a lot. I don't think the Azure uh, Microsoft minds because then you'll you'll be paying more for database storage. So the other solution is to directly upload it from the client to the Azure Blob Storage, which is a, a very reasonable solution, I think. The only thing is using a secret API key or connection string, and I don't want to put that in the front-end app. That's not very secure. So I am going to first post these files to my backend and then in the backend I'll be uploading them to Azure. Another thing to be mindful about is uh, you will see examples, a bit older examples, but uh, doing something like read async. So that's reading into memory. Uh, let me see. I'm not sure if the copy to async is that much better anyway. The reason they don't recommend doing that is because first, so, uh, multiple reasons. First one is for security reasons. You could be uploading malicious files directly into your memory. Or you could uh, be uploading way too large files directly into the memory, which is going to impact your performance. So the second reason was performance. Uh, the performance issue we are trying to avoid by using max file size, but the malicious file types were yeah, we are trying to avoid by checking for the type, the, the file type. Um, but I don't think our solution is 100%. <laughs> um, at least here, we should probably uh, throw an error if it's not one of the correct file types. I also don't know if there's such a malicious technique as file binding, if I'm not mistaken, but you can bind a malicious program to a image. So I don't know how that would um, yeah, be handled. I'm not sure if the that file type is still going to be PNG or something else or some executable. Okay, that was a bit too much of that.